Hi everybody, I'm uh, Brent Becker, I'm one of the current UCI Ultrasound Fellows, and we're going to be talking today about uh, the shoulder dislocation study, the outline of the study, how to set up the machine, how to perform the ultrasound, and then the relevant forms. So, the point of this study, we're looking at acute shoulder dislocation and the utility of, of ultrasound in diagnosing uh, acute shoulder dislocation. So hopefully we'll be able to calculate the sensitivity and the specificity. So we're going to include any adult patient over the age of 18, 18 or greater, um, that presents with uh, some shoulder injury in which uh, acute shoulder dislocation is on the differential. So you guys will be uh, scanning kind of the, the tracking board and determining who might be eligible to enroll in this study. If you find a potential enrollee, uh, you will talk to the resident or talk to the attending, verify that uh, they're considering uh, shoot acute shoulder dislocation. Then you will approach the patient, consent them with this consent form, have them sign it, uh, and then you will go ahead and perform the ultrasound. So this is the, the page that you will uh, have them fill out. So now we're going to go over how to set up the machine, get it ready for ultrasounding, and how to actually perform the ultrasound itself. So when you approach the machine, it's generally going to look like this. First thing you're going to need to do is find the power cable that runs to the power strip in the back, plug it into the wall, lift the top of the ultrasound machine to expose the monitor. Usually it will be turned off. So hit this power button, turn it on. While we're waiting for that to warm up, you can uh, start this I record down here. So you're going to hit the left button. There's two buttons, the power and the record button. You'll hit the power button to get this blue light to come on. If you're having problems getting this to turn on, make sure that the power is connected in the back. Make sure that all the wires in the back of the machine are secure. Make sure that um, the flash drive is plugged into the back of the machine. Make sure all the cables are plugged into the power strip. And that's your basic troubleshooting. If you have any problems, just approach one of the residents or the attendants, uh, and they can help you out with the machine. So, now we have the machine on, we have our recorder on. The next uh, thing that we need to make sure is that we have the proper probe selected. We're going to be using the larger, the linear, high frequency probes. This is the L38, it refers to 38 millimeters across the surface of the probe face. Check the cable. This is a three probe selector here. Make sure that this button is clicked so that this is illuminated green. That will indicate that the probe is functioning. You can kind of push your finger and you'll see the screen um, shadow like so. And you'll know that it's hooked up and ready to, ready to go. You get some gel. Um, but before that, what we need to do is enter the patient information into the machine. So you're going to come over and hit this patient button here. And that's going to get you into the uh, form to input your patient information. So the first thing you're going to put in is the patient's medical record number. Then a couple of spaces. And you're going to obtain the patient number. Uh, from the data collection sheet, whether it's one, two, three, etc. So we'll, for these purposes, we'll just say it's patient number one, and then you want to input your last name as the person performing the ultrasound. Once you're done, you can hit this hot key for done. Hit OK. and then you're ready to perform the ultrasound. So the first thing you want to do is position the patient with their back towards you so that you're in a comfortable position to both perform the ultrasound and look at the screen. You're going to cover your transducer with plenty of gel. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to start by taking note of the probe marker. 
this probe marker, this little raised section on the probe, is always going to be off to your left as you're approaching the patient from the, uh, from the posterior. So I have my marker on the far side of the probe, my left side. You're going to apply the probe to the uh, lateral aspect of the arm. And what you're going to do is locate the, humor, the humerus, or the upper arm bone. So you're going to adjust the depth with one of these two buttons here. You get to the point where you're viewing this bright white edge followed by a shadow. And that indicates that you're on the arm bone or the humerus. Once you're there, you're going to move the probe up along the humerus, keeping the arm bone on, in, uh, within the view of the monitor. And then once you get to a, up about the top, you're going to slide around. And what you're looking for is a nice, crisp humeral head here, followed by an adjacent bright white structure that I refer to as the glenoid or the glenoid fossil. And that's the bony uh, segment that articulates with the humerus to form the shoulder joint. What you want to do is keep the probe perpendicular or parallel with the ground at all times and this will give you the appropriate view. Really? I mean and that's kind of So we can see that this probe is parallel to the ground. We're getting a nice view of the humeral head here and then the glenoid uh, here on the left. So once you get this view, what I want you to do is push this record button down on the eye record. It was green and now we see that it's flashing red. That means that it's recording. And then once it's recording, what I want you to do is just kind of scan through the shoulder joint, up and down, just to make sure that you're getting some some uh, ideal views of the shoulder. Then once you're, once you're done doing that, hit the power button on the eye record, and that will pause the eye record. And you can see that it's now alternating, flashing green and red. And that means that it's paused. So while it's paused, what you want to do is get a nice, clean view of the shoulder joint, and then hit this freeze button on the ultrasound machine, and then you can just put the probe down because your image is, is frozen on the screen. Okay? Your eye record is still paused, and now what we're going to do is we're going to drop calipers. So you're going to hit this caliper button on the machine, and what we're going to be doing is dropping a tangent to both the humeral head and the, the glenoid. Hit the select to lock in your endpoint. And you're going to get the line uh, as close to parallel as you can. I use the y-axis of our cursor uh, and try to line it up with the edge of the, of the screen. So that looks pretty good. Once we have the caliper where we want it, we'll hit caliper again. And now we're going to go and do a tangent off of the glenoid. So find the high point of the glenoid. And then we're going to work our way over and try to get a nice parallel line. Select and lock that in. And then finally, we're going to hit caliper a third time. And what we're going to do is measure the distance between our two previous, previously placed line segments. And so this gives us a step-off distance of 0 0.58 centimeters. Then, once you have this still image on the screen, what I want you to do is hit this power button again on the eye record, and this will go back to flashing red and indicate that you're recording. Once you've recorded a few seconds of this, then you can hit the record button, and it will return to solid yellow, then proceed to solid green, and indicate that it's no longer recording. So now that you've obtained and recorded your images, you're ready for the data collection form. Start off by filling out the patient's MRN, their demographic information, the patient's chief complaint, and then your name as the one performing the ultrasound. Ultrasound findings obviously refer to 
the ultrasound of the shoulder and, and the measurements that you've made. This first point, humeral head position, refers to the position of the humerus with regards to the glenoid. So if we refer back to our image of the shoulder here, we have our humerus here on the right, and we have our glenoid here on the left. And the question is, is the humerus anterior or posterior to the, uh, the glenoid? So for the purposes of our ultrasound, which we're shooting from the patient's back, the closer to the top of the screen or the closer to the patient's skin is considered more posterior. So the humerus in this situation is posterior to the glenoid, and so we would circle posterior. If we had the reverse orientation such that the humeral head is lower on the screen than the glenoid fossa, then we would have the opposite orientation and it would be anterior. Most, in most cases, you're going to be circling posterior. The step-off distance is the distance of the C line segment, the distance between our A and B line segments. That is the tangent to the humerus and the tangent to the glenoid, the distance between those two tangent lines. Then additional ultrasound findings or comments if you have any questions, any issues, any other problems uh, or inquiries, you can put them there. You can disregard this last section as we're going to be uh, following up on the x-rays uh, at a later date. So that pretty much concludes uh, this video on how to perform the ultrasound, how to record your data, uh, and pretty much take care of everything else that you need to. So again, if at any point you have any questions, have any issues, you can locate a resident or an attending to help you out. Absolutely.